<clears throat> Alrighty guys, thanks for joining me. This is your host ID Jester back in 2005 at US Cellular Field in Chicago and the Chicago White Sox taking on Ichiro Suzuki and the Seattle Mariners. Chicago has a 6-4 record and Seattle has a 4-6 record. Here's your starting lineups for today's game. It's going to be Ichiro Suzuki in right field. Randy Wynn in left. Adrian Beltre is at third. Brett Boone is at second. Raul Abanez is at DH. Scott Spezio down at first. Willie Bloomquist in center field. Dan Wilson is the catcher. Wilson Valdez is the shortstop. And pitching today for the Seattle Mariners, Ryan Franklin, the right-hander. For your hometown Chicago White Sox, it's going to be Timo Perez out of left field. Tadi Hato Iguchi at second base. Carl Everett is the DH today, batting third. Carl, uh, Paul Konerko, first baseman. He'll be batting cleanup in fourth. Jermaine dies in right field. Aaron Rowland is in center field. Juan Uribe is at short. Chris Widger is the catcher. And Joe Creaney is at third. Pitching today. Four. Your Chicago White Sox is none other than Mark Burlisle, the lefty. So we got a lefty-righty matchup today here in Chicago. Let's go ahead and get things started off here. All righty. Well, let's just minimize that for a second. There we go. <clears throat> All righty. Let's uh, pop up a few things you might want to see here. Make this a little bit bigger there. All right, we got our triple play assistant. We're obviously using triple play baseball, one of the best baseball simulation games out there that I really, really enjoy playing. So if you don't know much about triple play baseball, go check it out. TBBaseball.info. TBBaseball.info. And uh, pick you up a few seasons because I think it's a really, really good system. The fact that it has the triple play assist, it makes the game flow really easy and really fast. And we're going to show you how well it plays. All right, so let's go ahead and get things started here in the top of the first inning. It's going to be Ichiro Suzuki against Mark Burlow, the lefty. And Ichiro Suzuki is a lefty. So it's a lefty-lefty matchup. Should favor Burlow, but let's see. Ichiro Suzuki, not an easy out. He averages... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me again. He averages uh, 303 on the season, so not an easy out for sure. Oh, before we do that, let's actually go and check out this game. Uh, so this is game number 11 of the season from April 16th. And it is going to be a day game on grass. All right, that's what I wanted to find out. It's a day game on grass. And let's go ahead and try this out. Take game on grass. I'm going to put this right there. That's fine. All right, so we will roll for the weather. It's going to be an April day. And it's going to be in Chicago. Chicago, Chicago. There you go. Let's see what the weather's like. Oh, no wind. And it's a cool day here in Chicago. In real life, it was... Uh, Let's see what the weather was in real life. It, in real life, it was 64 degrees. The wind was 12, 12 miles an hour in from left field, and it was sunny. There you go. What else could you ask for? All righty. I just tried to find the best place for this. I don't know. Let's put this over here, I guess. All right. All right, so here we go. No wind and uh, increase the stamina of the starters by four. So Mark Burwell can go 39. That would take him up to 44 batters. Let's hope he does that well. Ichiro Suzuki, when we roll the three 10-sided dice, it is black, then white, then green. If it's between zero, 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 and 499, it'll come off the batter. If it's between 500 zero, zero, and 999, it'll come off the pitcher. And then, of course, there is lefty-righty matchups, if that's important to you. And, of course, it should be. Here we go. Ichiro Suzuki against Burlisle. Lefty, lefty. I rolled a 4-14. <clears throat> 4 and that's off the end of the bat of Suzuki. On to Iguchi. 
<coughs> excuse me, I'm still under the weather. Over to Konerko, and that's going to be a 4-3 put, put out. So Suzuki to Iguchi. It sounds like we're playing the Korean League right now. And he's out of there. That brings up Randy Wynn. He is a switch hitter. He'll go from the right side this time. Randy Wynn, the righty. That is a 145. That's going to be trouble, I bet, against left-handers. And that is going to be ripped into right center field. And that's going to put you over the head to die. It's going to bounce off the wall. Wins around first, out to second. And he's going to be here to the throw from die. And it's offline. And in with the nice slide there is Wynn. And that's going to be a one-out double for Randy Wynn. The runner in scoring position for the Seattle Mariners. And that brings up Adrian Beltre. Future Hall of Famer, Adrian Beltre. And that is a 374 lefty, 374. And that's going to be a routine grounder hit at the shortstop. And routine grounder hit to short. And Uribe is going to hold win back. So we're going to have to short to first and you will hold. Okay. So with two outs, that brings up Brett Boone. Can Mark Burlow get out of this jam here in the first top of the first? Win with the double, and now it's Brett Boone. Brett Boone will average 221 in the season and 290 on base with a slugging percentage of 350. He does have 326 at bats, 72 hits, and seven home runs. Brett Boone for the Seattle Mariners, 964. <coughs> he is a right hander, 964. It's going to be a hard hit to Rebay. Rebay. Backhand stab, throw, cross the diamond to Konerko, stretch and catch. And we go to the bottom of the first. It's still no score. There's your defensive alignment out there. And so far, it's a one, two, three, four inning. And uh, look at that picture of Adrian Beltre. <laughs> He's got that little smirk on his face. He always has that smirk on his face, didn't he? All right, here we go. And uh, it's going to start off with Timo Perez against Ryan Franklin. Franklin, a right-hander. Timo Perez is the lefty, and that is going to be a 659 lefty, 659, and that is exactly what we needed. 659 to 682 is a ground ball back up the middle for a base hit. So good start by Timo Perez as he gets that one right on the button. 659. So Ryan Franklin, a hold of three and a steal of minus one. Timo Perez... He's got a one jump and a zero steal. No threat to steal. That'll bring up Tadihito Iguchi. So Iguchi's up, and Perez is at first. Nobody out here in the bottom of the first inning. And here comes the pitch. And that is a 0-61. That is going to be an error check. So we're going to go right to the error check. And this is going to go to the shortstop. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this is going to be the shortstop. It's going to be Valdez. Valdez at short. Uh, error 13. Error 13 for Valdez. Let's see if he can make the play. No, you. He throws it wide. And runners are going to be on with the E6. That's going to put two men aboard for the White Sox. As Valdez could not make a, a good play on that one. Two on, nobody out for Carl Everett. Carl Everett is a switch hitter. He'll go from the left side. And that is a 427 right-hander. That's going to be a routine grounder to second. They're going to get the runner uh, boom to Valdez. Valdez throwing it to Spezio at first. Not in time. Oh, legging that one out is Carl Everett. And they're going to get the 4-6. Four, 4-6, six. Four, six, wherever it is. There it is. But that's going to put runners at the corners for Paul Konerko. Let's see how Paul Konerko is doing so far, so, so far this season. He's got nine hits, three home runs, five RBIs, six walks, six strikeouts, betting 237. In real life, he would bat 283 with an on base of 375 and a slugging of 534. Oh, and now you hit that one foul. <laughs> excuse, excuse my cough. I'm <coughs> still under the weather, so trying to get back into a normal routine but just uh yeah just not good Konerko that is going to be a 231 right hander 231 and that is the last number and is hit by pitch and that's going to load the bases 
228 to 231 is a hit by pitch. <clears throat> and so Konerko will get aboard, and that can that's going to bring up Jermaine Dye. So Jermaine Dye batting 250 so far, two home runs, four RBIs. He's going to walk in six strikeouts. Jermaine Dye, he'll bat 274 in the season with 31 home runs. He's got a little bit of pop, and we could use some of that pop right here, right now. Let's see if he can do it. Seven, five, five. Oh, I hit my hit my camera or my uh, microphone. Sorry, guys. Uh, seven fifty-five. He's a right-hander. Seven fifty-five. Oh my gosh. Seven fifty-six would have been a hit by pitch. Seven fifty-five is going to be a slow grounder to short, and the only play is going to be to first, and that's going to advance all the runners. And Chicago is going to take a one nothing, as that was a little chopper that rolled past the pitcher's mound. Right to Valdez, he had to charge that one all the way. Only play was at first. That brings up Aaron Rowland. <coughs> Aaron Rowland, one out, two outs now. Defense is back in normal. We're shading him to pull this one to the left. And that is a 285, right-hander 285. And that's gonna be a ground ball hit to sharply. Right to Valdez, he's gonna make the play. Over to first, and that's going to retire the side, but the Chicago White Sox pick up one run. On one hit, no errors. They had the bases loaded and couldn't cash in with the big hit. But they do put in one across, and it's one nothing here against Seattle. Raul Abanez is up. He bat 280 on the season with 20 home runs. And that's a 464. That's going to be an easy fly. That one's headed out to Jermaine Dye out in right field, and he will make the catch. That'll be one up, one down for Scott Spezio. Spezio, uh, he won't be around long with this batting average of 064. And uh, he's actually got one hit at three at bat so far. Scott Spezio, he won't be around long. And he will be facing against the very toughy left-hander, Mark Burlow. That's an 817. It's probably a good thing he came off of Burlow's card. Right hander 817, though, and that's going to be an easy fly to center field. And Spezio's down. That brings up Willie Bloomquist. <coughs> Two outs in the top of the second. Willie with a 41. That'll be an error check. Let's go right to the error check. And that's going to be on the shortstop, Uribe. And here's his card right here. He's a 16. So we just punch that in and see, oh, he can't make it either. Wow. So another error on the shortstops, and both teams flubbing it there on the left side. So that puts Boonquist aboard. <coughs> uh, and I shouldn't have flipped his. I should have put uh, flipped his. He is a really good stealer. Uh, Burlisle is a hold of four and a no adjustment on the steal rating. Boonquist is a jump of three and a steal of nine. We might try to get the jump with him. Let's see. He uh, burrow out with a jump uh, or a hold of four. And Boonquist with a jump of three. And can he get the jump? No, he can't get the jump. As Mark Burlow keeps tossing it over, keeping him close, and Kernerko holding him on. So it brings up Dan Wilson. Dan Wilson, the catcher. That's an 878. He's a righty. 878. And that's going to be swing and a miss by Wilson. And that's going to retire the side. We go to the bottom of the second. And it's still 1 0 Chicago. One and a half in the books. That brings up Juan Uribe, the right hander, against Ryan Franklin, the righty. And that is a 562. Versus a right-hander, 562, and that's going to be an infield range play. So we're going to check the range, and that's going to be infield range this time. Got normal defense because nobody's on. We are on grass, and Uribe is an RP. Off the end of the bat to the third baseman, that's Beltre. So we look at Adrian Beltre, and we look at he's very good at third base, very good. So we use a very good, and it's going to be kept to in the infield. But ball goes off his glove. It's going to be an infield single for Juan Uribe. He needed that. He needs to get on a better, a better uh, uh, average. 
We need Uribe to get the bat work in here. Chris Widger, the catcher. That's 241 in the season with only four home runs. 962. And that's going to be ground ball hit hard to Valdez. Valdez flips it over to Boone. Boone, Despizio, and in time, 6-4-3. to four to three, And that's a killer there. And that's going to do it. That's going to clear the bases in the bottom of the second for Joe Creedy's up. Joe Creedy, a right-hander. He hits 22 home runs in 432 at-bats. And that is going to be a 8-24 right-hander, 8-2-4. And that is going to be a deep drive. And that's going to be a deep drive. Let's find out what happens. Creed is a 5-power. He's got a little bit of pop. And he is a RP right-hand puller. And that one's gone. Joe Creedy. Right now, he's sitting at 2 home runs and 7 RBIs, no walks, and 6 strikeouts, a 286 average. Well, you could put another one on the books as that one is hit well and hit solid and it is gone. And just like that, the White Sox take a two to nothing lean. And it brings up Timo Perez. Timo, 218 average, so only two home runs. 300 on the dot against the right hander. 300 on the dot and swing and a miss. And that'll do it, but that'll be another run and another hit and another error. And we are, no, I'm sorry, no errors that time. We're going to go to the top of the third inning. And Burl Isle against Wilson Valdez. Wilson Valdez. 795. He's a right-hander. 795. And that's a deep drive off of Burl Isle. Let's see what happens here. Another deep. Uh, Valdez only hit zero home runs. So he's got a power of one. So, He's an RSP. He needs a really good roll, and it's going to be caught in center field. There we go. It's a fly ball to center. He just doesn't have enough pop. He had no home runs in the regular uh, regular season, so didn't have much of a chance here, and that's good to see. Someone that does have some chance is Ichiro Suzuki, though. Ichiro on the season, 289 average. He's got no home runs and uh, six walks, six strikeouts. The man, the legend, the machine, Ichiro Suzuki. 350, uh, 353, sorry, 353 lefty. 353 is going to be ground ball off, off the end of his bat again right at Iguchi. I think that's exactly what he did the first time. And that's going to be second out of the inning. And that brings up Randy Wynn with a big double in the first. They could uh, strand him there. And unfortunately, that's going to fall into a 160 range against the lefty, though. His 160 is going to be a double play to short. No one's on, so we don't have to worry about the double play. But we will take the out this time. And we'll go to the bottom of the third. It's 2-0 Chicago in. Tadihito Iguchi batting 278 in real life with 15 home runs. Let's see how he's doing so far. 206 average. He's got only one home run, three RBIs, two walks, and 11 strikeouts. Obviously, Iguchi needs to get better. And that is a 0 69, which is an error. Anytime you roll from 11 to 70, it's always an error on all players' cards. So it's going to be an error check. This time it's going to be Randy Wynn in left field. Randy, what was your error in left field? He is a 20. Uh, probably not going to be dropping this, but you never know. It's going to be a short fly, and he'll make the catch. So Gucci's out of there, and it brings up Carl Everts. Carl Everts. We didn't check on Carl. What's how Carl doing so far? 250 average, a home run, three RBIs, four walks, and six strikeouts. He's off to a decent start, Carl Everts. That's a 658. And he'll go from the left side, 658, and that's the last number in his out range. 659 would have been a single. It's going to be a ground ball hit at Boone, and Boone will make the play. So last number, unfortunately, Paul Konerko. <coughs> Paul Konerko is up. 
And that, my friends, is a 0, zero 2, which means it's a crazy play. Let's see what happens on the crazy play. And it's a 418. Batter fouls ball off big toe. Check for injury. Oh, guess what? No injury. <laughs> and we move on. Give him a rebat. 308. 308. And that will be a walk. So Canerco is going to earn himself a walkie. Wobbles down to first. Little sore on the foot. But uh, Canerco, not much of a threat to steal, as I recall. And I was correct. Jermaine Die. And that is going to be a 684 right hander. 684. And that's going to be a base hit. Ground ball back up in the middle. And that's going to send the runner to third. Konerko going to third. And runners at the corners now for Aaron Rowland. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep on rolling. Aaron Rowland. Against Brian Franklin. 312 right hander. 312. A swing and a miss. And Franklin's going to get out of the inning unscathed. So we go to the top of the four that is still 2 0 Chicago. Burlow against Adrian Beltre. 676 right hander. 676. And that's going to be ground ball into center field. Base hit for. Adrian Beltre. He's not much of a threat to steal. He had uh, three stolen bases. He was caught once, so not much of a threat. That brings up Brett Boone. Brett Boone. And that is a 105. That could be trouble. 105s are usually bad. And that is going to be, yep, bad. That's going into left center field for a double. 105. 105, and I gotta check my, check my little chart here. Uh, if I could find my damn little charts, where are they? Oh, uh, where are my charts? Did I move them? No, here they are. Okay. That's. Uh, well, let's see here. All right, so it was a 105. Uh, who hit it? Brett Boone hit it, 105. I knew that was going to be trouble. As LCF, LCF, uh, if he has a speed of four or higher, he will score. Bale Trey has a speed of six. I figured he would, and that's going to put in a run on the double. Again, Brett Boone ripped that one. Oh. I gotta undo that because I didn't hit the double plus. There we go. So Brett Boone with a nice double. And it's now two one ball game. That brings up Raul Abanez. And that is a 627. He's a lefty, 627. That's an easy fly. And coming in to make the catch will be Aaron Rowan in center field. For the first out, Scott Spezio. 994, that's about as high as you can get, and that would be a double play to second. But it's just a 4 3 put out. Runner moves up, and that brings up Willie Bloomquist. Two outs, defense back in normal. Here comes the pitch. 729, that could be trouble as well. 729, no, it's going to be a ground ball to Rime. He'll pick it up, throw it to first, and that will retire the side, but. Seattle picks up a run on two hits and no errors. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's 2-1. Juan Urime with the base hit so far in this game. Let's see if he can do that again. 960 is probably not going to do it. Right-hander, 960. Yep, just out of his range. It's going to be ground ball to his opposite. Valdez at short. And 1-I. Chris Widger. 547 right hander and that'll be an infield range play so we're testing the range infield range nobody's on 
It's grass. He's an RP. It's in the hold is short. And Valdez. Uh, Valdez. Where is Valdez? Here he is. He's average. Average. Let's see if he can make this play. Average. And diving stop. Batter out at first. Other runners advance. So he does make the play. For two-way. And that brings up Joe Creedy. Last time up. Hit a home run. Joe Creedy. 153. That could be a good one. Right-hander. And that's going to be another base hit in the left center field for a single. So he keeps the inning going for the White Sox. That brings up Timo Perez. Creedy, I don't think, is much threat to steal. He had one stolen base. It was caught once. Timo Perez. And that is a 33. That'll be an error check. Checking the error on the right fielder. That's Suzuki. Suzuki errors 18. Pretty solid. And he's going to make an easy catch. And that will retire the side. So after four complete here, it's 2-1. to one. And Dan Wilson will come up. Dan the Man Wilson. 248. Against the left-hander. 248, and he will strike out. Dan Wilson strikes out. Wilson Valdez. 661. Righty, 6. 61, and that's a ground ball back up the middle. Base hit for Wilson Valdez. Uh, he's not much of a threat to steal either. Two stolen bases, was caught twice. And that brings up Suzuki. Ichiro Suzuki, 250. Against the lefty, though, 250, and that is going to be ripped in the corner. Oh, my, down the line, and that's going to be trouble. Valdez is coming around second. He's headed to third. Dai is having trouble with it, and they're going to send Valdez home. Suzuki on his way to third. Here comes the throw. Not in time, and that's going to be a triple. 250 is a triple versus a left-hander, and that is going to tie the ball game up off the bat of Ichiro Suzuki with one out. Defense will come in. Defense in. Randy Wynn is up. 868. And he will be right under 868. And that is a big swing and miss there. Burlow nailed him. Fastball right by him. That brings up Adrian Beltre. Beltre. Defense back in normal. Two outs. Two, two, six. Lefty. Oh, he's hit by the pitch. Hit by the pitch. So Beltre's hit. And a little nubber off the end of his of his uh, elbow guard there. Runners at first and third for Brett Boone. Oh, no. 119 lefty. And that's going to be okay because that's a bound ball. Down to Creed. Creed over to Canerco. And what a play there by Joe Creedy. And that's going to be a 5-3 as he had to come in and grab that on the run, throw it in one motion across his body, and get it online with the speedy Brett Boone. That's a run of six. And could have uh, got there, but no. Great play there, and that's going to keep it. One run on two hits and no errors. We go to the bottom of the fifth, halfway home here in Chicago land. And it brings up... Tadihito Gucci at 544. That's going to be a range play. Is it going to be uh, outfield or infield as he is a righty? And that is going to be an infield. Once again, infield range. And nobody's on. We're on grass. And he's an RSP. And it's up the middle. Oh, we're going to check on Franklin. Franklin is an MD. Not great at fielding his position, but... Diving stop, batter out at first. Wow. So that's going to be a 1-3 put out. As Franklin makes it. 
And that brings up Carl Everts. Carl Everts. Two ninety-nine versus a right-hander, and that is a walk as he earns himself a ball four after fouling off about three or four good pitches there by Franklin. Finally, Franklin couldn't get that outside corner and ball four. So one out walk. Carl Everts not well at stealing. Canerco. That's a 706 right hander. 706. That's an easy fly. That's going to win in left field. He'll make the catch. And that brings up Jermaine Dye. Oh, that's good. 106 right hander. 106. And that's going to be a base hit. Ground ball back up the middle. A GCF. See, runner on first is Everts. Carl Everts' speed is a seven. Uh, so it was a 106 right-hander. Center fielder is Bloomquist. Uh, center fielder, he's a minus one. It would take him down to a six. Yeah, we're going to try and send him to third. Why not? Oh, and he's out. Of course. All right. Well, we had to try. So that one, we're going to have to detail this one. That is going to be a single. It's going to go to center field over to third base, and you will be out. And that's going to do it as the White Sox tried to get an extra base and it didn't quite work out uh actually i forgot with two outs there should have been a bonus on that shouldn't there uh let's see send the runners uh hit and run yeah plus two so it should have been a plus two gotta remember that oh well all right, so we stay at two apiece. We go to the top of the six. Raul Abanez. Raul. 679 lefty. And that's going to be base hit back up the middle. Passy Gucci and single for Raul Abanez. If you can get the jump. If he can get the jump, he's a four versus, he's only a one jump. Uh, we can, uh, let's see. We got to look up Widger here. Chris Widger. Oh, he's a plus three. God, he's horrible. All right. Uh, so, yeah. So, plus three. And he gets a minus two. For the jump. So Abanez is a seven. So he gets a minus two for the jump, takes him to a five, plus three because of the arm of the catcher, and nothing for the pitcher. So he's a definite eight, and that is going to be a stolen base. So Raul Abanez with a single and a stolen base. That brings up Scott Spezio. Nobody out. And the Mariners threatening to take the lead here. And that's going to be a 27, and that, you know what that is, boys and girls. That is going to be an error check. And that is going to go to third base, Creedy. Joe Creedy, uh, he's a 17. Routine grounder plus. No. Uh, Uh, that's going to be a routine grounder. Um, we don't have a runner at first, so we don't have to worry. No runner at first, use routine ground results. So we're going to have to uh, ground ball third to first, and you hold. So good play there. 
by Creedy. That brings up Willie Bloomquist. One out. Abanez. Three fifty nine. He's a left-hander, 359, and that's going to be another routine grounder to short. Same play we just had, routine grounder. Short to first, and he will hold again. And it brings up Dan Wilson. Two outs now. 876, right-hander. 876, and swing and a miss, and a big strike out there by Burlisle. Burlisle, Mark Burlisle, and we're going to the bottom of the six. Air Rowan is up, and we got a 2 2 ball game. And that is going to be a 21, which means it's another error check. And this one's going to be oh, nope, just a routine grounder back to the pitcher. One your rebase up. 246 right hander. 246, and that's going to be a routine grounder to short. And Chris Widger, Mr. Noodle Arm, plus three. Good lord. And that is a 0 0 1 crazy play. Crazy play. Uh, first base slips into dugout going after foul ball, but holds off for the out. So it's going to be a pop-up to the first baseman, and no look, he's okay. No injury on the play. So it's an easy 1-2-3 inning. We go to the top of the seventh, Burlisle, against Wilson Valdez. 790, right-hander, 790, and that is, oh, no, no, 790. Hang on, 790, and, oh, geez, that's worse. That's going to be a double. In the right center field, double by Wilson Valdez. <sighs> and that's going to bring up Michiro Suzuki. With nobody out. Suzuki is, what's his, what's his sacrifice rating? Uh, but three. Uh, but, but rating of three, we're on grass, uh, we don't have anyone, you know, yeah, we don't have anyone guarding first or third base. And we didn't call our corners in, so I'm not going to cheat. Roll the dice. Oh, uh, I guess just normal then. Sacrifice. Better out of first. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Watch yourself, hell. <laughs> like you were with your ice cream sandwich. Ah, uh, so. So it will be a good sacrifice. Uh, doesn't tell us. Doesn't say who it went to. We'll just go third to first. All right. Uh, oh, actually, I gotta undo that. Erase that. Um, it's gonna be a sacrifice hit to third. There we go. All right. So Suzuki does his job. He gets the runner moved over with. Only one out. Defense will come in. Valdez is at third. Wynn is at the plate. Burlisle, 417. And that's going to be a routine grounder to second with the routine grounder with the man in. Playing in, boys. What do we do when we're playing in again? Uh.
Oh, they can try. They can try for the runner if they send the runner home. Valdez, what's his speed? Valdez, his speed is only five, so they have to decide: are they going to send him? Five. That's a probably. Let's see, sending the runners to five. Uh, there's not two outs. Infield in throwing. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. He can't. Because he got a minus five. If the defense is playing in. Right, right, right. So, right. So it's going to be a. Uh, it's going to be a deep deal one here. Is that is a force. What did I say? 417 right hander. Uh, must be up here. 417. Yeah. So it's gonna go second to first, and you will hold. All right. Two outs now for Adrian Beltre. Defense back. 499, and that's gonna do it. An easy fly to center field. Fly ball to center field, and that's uh, Burlow's gonna get out of the inning. And that brings up Franklin against Joe Creedy. Seventh inning stretch time here. Ooh, that could be good. 127. He's a right-hander, and that will be good as that is lined into right uh, left center field. Over the head of win, and that's going to bounce off the wall. Creedy rounds first. He's headed to second, and he will start the White Sox half of the seventh with a double, which now puts uh, Franklin in trouble. So, let's see, Timo Perez, a lefty, then a righty, then a switch hitter, then a righty, then a righty. So, it looks like they're going to the bullpen here. And they're going to bring in Thornton, the left-hander, just to face probably Timo Perez. Uh, let's see here. They might bring in Matt Thornton just to face the lefty, Timo Perez. So Thornton in. Now Timo is a great bunter. And they know that, so they're going to play corners in. Uh, so let's cancel that. So we look we, at a bunt. It's a five. And... Winners are playing in. Roll the dice. Sacrifice. So, sacrifice hit. Uh, doesn't say. We'll just say, I don't know, to the pitcher. That's fine. So, Creedy moves up on the bunt by Perez. And now the White Sox can get right back where the Mariners were in the top of the seventh. One out, runner at third. So that means the Mariners are going to do exactly what the White Sox did and play their infield in. Iguchi. 485. Not what we wanted to see there, buddy. Left. And that's an easy fly to center field, though. And I don't think an easy fly is what we needed, though. Easy fly... Easy fly. Runner to third may attempt to score. Well, let's see what's Joe Creedy's speed there. Joe Creedy is a speed of six. Um, it was hit to 485. Uh, where are we? Uh, lefty, yeah. 485 lefty. And it went to center field. That's Boomquist. Let's see what Boomquist's arm looks like. It's center field. Oh, it's a minus one. Damn. So if we look at this, uh, setting the runners. Creedy again. What is his? Speed is six. Not the fastest on the planet, by the way. Six. And the arm of minus one takes him to a five.
Hmm. Or you leave it in the hands of Carl Everett to get him a base hit. We're going to send him. We're going to send him. Let's roll the dice and see what happens. Safe. All righty. So Creedy. So that's going to be a sacrifice hit to center field. And <clears throat> sending the runner as Iguchi gets that just out in the into uh, center field far enough. Boonquist had a long throw and not in time. And the White Sox pick up that all-important lead again, 3-2. to two. Carl Everett, let's see if Carl would have gotten a hit anyways. That is a 49, it doesn't matter. It's a 40-whatever, it's still going to be an error check. And that's going to be the shortstop, Valdez. We've had two errors on the shortstop so far today. Let's see if we can make it three. He's a 13. And E1, another error on a shortstop. That's two for the Mariners and one for the White Sox. And that is an E6. So it would have scored the runner anyways. But we had to try. All right, Konerko. Let's make him pay for that error now, Konerko. Let's make him pay, baby. 932, right-hander. 932 is a walk by Thornton. And actually, hang on a second. They would not leave Thornton in to face off against a right-hander. Righty, righty, righty coming up. Yeah, uh, so we're going to redo that. Uh, they would have brought a right-hander in. Um, Nelson or Putz? Nelson or Putz? Let's see. Nelson. Puts. Uh, sure, we'll give it to Nelson. Why not? So Jeff Nelson's going to come in. All right. So now let's uh, let's re-roll that. Conurco against Nelson makes much more much more baseball sense there. All right. So Everett on first. Everett's not much of a threat to steal, is he? Uh, no. I think most of the White Sox. Timo Perez, no. Higuchi is. He's one of our one guys. One guy on our team that can actually steal bases. No. Mm, Jermaine Dye can. Mm, Roland can. So it looks like it's up to these three guys to get our stolen bases. All right. So Konerko, come on, Paul. You can do this, buddy. Konerko against Nelson. That is a 428. He's a right-hander, and that is not what we wanted. That's a ground ball to Beltre. Throws to first, but the White Sox pick up that all-important lead. And Burlisle can stay in because he's not had a hit against him. Or a walk, or he's not allowed a base runner, actually. So Brett Boone against Burlau. Now the question is, do we want to leave the lefty in is the question. we got a righty, a lefty, a switch hitter, a righty, and a righty, and a righty coming up. A righty. And then they got Raul Abanez, the lefty. So if he can get through Boone, then he, yeah, we'll leave Burlau in. Thinking if we can get by Boone, then maybe we got a shot of getting uh, the lefty coming up. Is going to be a 389. What a big change there is a 7 falls over. 389. Lefty. 389. That's a routine grounder. Creedy. Backhand stab. Throws across his body once again on target. There's Creedy. Now Raul Abanez, the lefty. That's why we left Burlau in. We need to get this out, boys. Here comes a sign from the coach. Winter. Widger relaying it to Burlisle, and the pitch is a foul ball. Oh, Abanez. Uh-oh, 251. That could be trouble. Lefty, 251, though. No, it's going to be Rain Anaguchi. As Aguchi was playing him back up the middle, he throws across, and Canerco keeps his foot on the bag for the out, and that brings up two outs for Scott Spezio. Scott. 
Uh, let's see what they did in real life in this game. Uh, Seattle left everyone in. No changes. Same thing with the White Sox. There was no... Nobody brought in or anything crazy like that. So, interesting. All right. Not that I wouldn't do it, but I just, you know, if... if you know, whatever. Spezio. 580. Oh, boy. He's, he's got a chance because it's an outfield range play. Outfield range. First time here. Red Grass. He is a... Uh, it's going to be an RSP, and it's going to be Texas League or right field. That's Jermaine Die. Here's his card right here. His average. Make the play. Running catch. There you go. And that's going to retire <coughs> the side in the top of the eighth. We go to the bottom of the eighth. An insurance run would be just special. And Jermaine Die made that great running catch in the outfield. Is up. And he rolls himself a four. 45 right hander and that is gonna be an easy fly to center. Aaron Rollins up. 645 right hander. 645, easy fly to left. And Rebay. 623 base it. Ground ball. Pass Nelson, pass Boone into out the outfield for a single. Juan Uribe. <clears throat> and he's got no chance to steal. He's a minus one to steal, actually. He's a minus one. I think there's like three players on our team that's a minus one. Uh, and by the way, that's not good. So Widger... With two outs, and I had to take a drink because my throat's getting sore. Winger, uh, the catcher, who's our uh, backup catcher today, is going to be Perninsky, all right, on the bench. We're giving him the day off. Is that what we're doing? All right. Winger, need to come up big here, buddy. You know what? I wonder, do we put the hit and run on? Do we put the hit and run on, huh? We don't ever put the hit and run on. It's one of our... It's one of our begaboos. There's a right-hander. He gets no home runs versus right-handers. Well... Yeah, we're going to put the hit and run on. Widger, here comes the pitch, and the remake goes. Well, this is going to be interesting. 396, right-hander, 396, and that's going to be an easy fly to center field. I don't think that's going to be adjusted by the hit and run at all. Mm, no, I don't think so. It's an easy fly. I think it went center. It doesn't matter. It's an out. All right, so we go to the top of the ninth. And Burlau, is Burlau going to go for the complete game? He is. Uh, uh, is he, is the question. You got a righty, righty, righty. Three right-handers coming up. They're going to come out for the ninth. We'll see how things go. And it's going to be Willie Boonquist first. Two, uh-oh, 201 lefty base hit. Left center field, single, and that will do it as Burrell says, yeah, I just can't, just can't do it. So the closer is going to have to come in. Takasu or, Takasu is a righty and Hermanson. Uh... Dustin Hermanson. Hartakasu. Uh, let's see. I think Hermanson, because it's a save situation, I think Takasu is more of a ninth inning guy if it's tied. 
Hermanson is, if it's not tied, and it needs to be saved. So Dustin Hermanson comes in, and Boonquist is on first. Now what's his, uh, ooh, wow. He's got he's to gotta try to get the jump. He has got to try and get the jump here. And he's pretty good at it, too. He's a three. Jump rating a three. But the pitcher hold rating is a five. Maybe he can't get the jump. I hope not. Oh, good. Because Hermanson is a plus three to steal on. Bloomquist is a nine steal. That puts him already at 12. Plus our crappy catcher. It would be almost like an automatic steal. So good thing he's held. Now, Dan Wilson, not a great bunter. He's only a one bunt. Do you bunt? Try and get that runner in scoring position? Even though your catcher is horrible at bunting? Uh, no, nope. I think he's just going to let him swing away, I guess. And it's an error check. Really? You can't make this easy on me, can you? No. Third base. That's Creedy. Here's his card. He is a 17. Let's make a double play on this. Oh, it could be, actually. So the batter's speed is a 5. We roll a die. If the die is less than the speed rating, batter is safe. If it's higher than the speed rating, it's a double play. And if it's equal to it, then we roll again. So uh, Wilson, it's going to definitely be a Creedy to Gucci. Now Gucci on the Canerco. And it's a nine, which means it's higher. And if it's higher... If it's less than the batter speed rating, he's safe. If it's higher, he's out, which means he's out. That's going to be a 5 to 4 to 3 around the horn double play. Wow, what a killer. What a killer that one that turned out to be. But that brings up Wilson Valdez, who's had a good game, as I recall. A uh, single and a double. He's 2 for 3. And one out left. The hometown crowd's on their feet cheering on the White Sox. Can they pull out this? Another game. Uh-oh. 151. Right hander. 151. And that's going to be base hit. And it's not over yet. Valdez, not much of a threat to steal. So we don't have to worry about him. But you do have one of the best hitters in baseball history coming up, Ichiro Suzuki. And he, he'll find a way to do something good. Last time up, it was a triple. Suzuki, oh no, 181, right-hander. 181. And that is going to be... Lined LCF uh, They could send the runner to third Valdez, what's his speed rating? He's a five But I don't think they want to risk it so they're just gonna take another single so back-to-back -back singles off of Hermanson. And I don't think it's going to matter because they would, you know, having a runner in second or a runner in third, not much difference. Still in scoring position for Randy Wynn. Now Wynn is a double, a ground out, a strikeout, and a ground ball out. So he's been all over the place today. Randy Wynn trying to keep things alive for Seattle. Down a run, two outs in the ninth. The pitch. Uh oh, God, another good number. 742. He's going to be a lefty. 742. And he's going to rip that in the gap. <laughs> and that's an RCF double. 
Uh, I'm sorry, an LCF double. LCF double. And the runner on first. If he has a run rating of four or higher, he will score. And Suzuki has a run rating of speed of 10. So he will easily come in. And that double just killed it, because now... <laughs> one out away from winning, and now they're behind by a run. As Adrian Beltre comes up, Hermanson just throws the um, ball into his glove. Just can't believe he gave up that hit. Another big hit by Randy Wynn. Man who will get traded later on to San Francisco. Oh, that brings up Adrian Beltre, and now the Mariners are up by one. But it's not over. 633, righty. And that'll do it. It's going to be an easy fly to center field. And where was that when we needed it, Hermanson? Oh, all right, well... Now it's time for Seattle to bring in their closer and see if he can screw it up. It's going to be any Gerdando. Eddie Gerdando. So Eddie's up. And he's going to be facing off against Joe Creaney here. Joe, come on, Joe. Say anything so, Joe. We need to win this. And a 413 lefty. And that's going to be an easy fly to left. And one up, one down. And that brings up Timo Perez, the left hander. 486 is not what we wanted to see either. Another easy fly ball to center field. Two easy fly ball outs, and that brings up Iguchi. Come on, Iguchi. Yeah, this is a good hit. 635, right hander, 635, and that'll be a base hit, ground ball. And he does have the speed to steal. So yeah, he needs to get the jump, though. That's the problem. Chup. Gerardo, hold is a three. And Iguchi, to get the jump, is only a two. Ah, oh, he's got to hold. Ah, oh, he's got to hold because, I mean, he's got a steal rating of eight. Ah. Oh. Plus one for the pitcher, too, which is taking him to a nine. So Iguchi's got to hold, and that brings up Carl Everts. Carl Everts now represents the winning run. Walk off for Carl Everett. Here we go. Against the left hander. Here we go. Two, six, seven. Two, 67. 235 to 246 is a home run. 247 to 292 is a routine grounder to second. Boone over to Spezio. And this one's going to go to the Mariners who pull off the miracle in Chicagoland by coming back in the ninth inning and scoring two runs in the top of the ninth and take this one four to three. The win goes to Nelson. Hermanson takes the loss, which he deserves. Bad, bad, bad. Gerardo with the save and the MVP is Joe Creedy. And wow. Here's our highlights from today, uh, April 16th, 2005. Washington 13-1 over Arizona. Atlanta 2-1 over Philadelphia. Chicago gets clobbered by Pittsburgh 5-2. Detroit 6-4 over Kansas City. In 10 innings, Florida doubles up the Mets 8-4. Houston 6-1 over Cincinnati. Los Angeles 4-3 over Oakland. Minnesota loses in Cleveland 6-4. New York crushes Baltimore 7-1. San Diego 8-3 over the Dodgers. San Francisco 6-2 over Colorado. Seattle 4-3 over Chicago. St. Louis crushes Milwaukee 2-0. 
Tampa Bay beats Boston 11 to 6 and Texas doubles up Toronto 4 to 2. Let's quickly look at how our recap is. We're two games behind Detroit now and with a 6 and 5 record as the Seattle Mariners win in Chicago and uh, in the top of the 9-2 and that was the game of the day. The game of the day was voted by the fans. And, of course, the play of the day was Randy Wins. Uh, top of the ninth. Seattle Banning. Men in first and second. Two outs, trailing three to two. Randy Wynn doubles, driving in two runs. Isn't that great? We give up the play of the day, boys. We're going to have a little meeting after the... Uh, little meeting after the press briefing... After the game, we have a little meeting in the clubhouse to talk to our men about their lazadaisical attitude going in the top of the ninth inning. We can't have that. Six and five record now. Two games behind Detroit. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. We will see you all next time. Thanks to Phil Reynolds for coming on by and saying hi. I do appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll see you all next time. So until then, take care. Hope all is well, and thanks for watching.